All right, guys, for our first speaker, I'm going to introduce Captain Ben Ferry. Ben has been a charter captain for over 40 years uh, down in the Gulf Shores, Orange Beach area. Did a ton of deep sea fishing stuff. And uh, he's a phenomenal inshore angler. Really, uh, now an obsessive fly angler as well, which is just wonderful for us. And uh, we're going to let him get in to talk about the things and the tools that he's used over that career and during that time to be successful, but also what we can apply on a day in, day out basis. So, guys, Captain Ben Perry. Appreciate y'all coming out. I'm here to help you. And I was a 100 ton captain for 45 years, and then before that, I was a deckhand. So I got about 52 years tied up in doing this. And uh, it's wonderful to be able to, to share what I've experienced and learned. And so I'm here to help you today. And how many people were here at, at the last seminar? Tom, okay. <laughs> so. The last time we talked, you know, we Tom talked says about, he gets roped into everything. <laughs> we talked about, uh, you know, kind of how to 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 find fish and what to look for on the flat and you know fish behavior. We're going to back up and start a little bit ahead of that. How do we get prepared for a successful trip? And this is. This is what I do, and this is what works for me. Research, network, and weather. So we'll go into research first. I came over on the Mayflower, so I've been here a while. And you guys are really fortunate because back when I started, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have all this wonderful technology. This fine angler right here, he's ahead of the game because he knows what to do with technology way more than what I do. But but using the technology and the data that is at our fingertips is super important. And I have a bunch of apps on my phone. I have a bunch of uh, websites on my phone. So the evening before or the day before, I'm going to go fishing. I start to look. I look at the conditions. Let's take, for instance, Grand Bay National Estuary. So they have a data station, and you can look at water temperature, turbidity, dissolved oxygen, salinity. You can look at all these things on your phone. And these data stations are in different places all over the areas that we fish. So even before you're going to go, you can look at these areas and go, well, you know, that looks good. You know, so you start to take all this information in. And so we can research, Google Earth, you know, all, all that stuff I start to look at the evening before, and I say, well, I want to go to the estuary. And so between the data and between what I already know, because I've fished there before, is, is the first part of putting the puzzle together. Because, you know, you can look at these places, and some of them you go, you know, well, the you know the turbidity is a 15, and the higher the number, the dirtier it is. So you you want to look for like a three or four, or even a five. Especially if all I do is sight fish, so clear water is imperative for me. So getting all these stations on your phone is something that I would suggest. And you can go to the National Data Buoy Center website, and they they have all this stuff, and it's just absolutely wonderful. After the, I'm through, I can grab my phone and I can show y'all individually, some, you know, 
some of this stuff. Network. What I mean by a network? Well, all of us have busy schedules and we wish we could fish every day, but we can't. So, that, you know, there may be a period of time, a week, two weeks, a month even, that you haven't been fishing. So you kind of don't know what's going on. So you research and you kind of got the conditions down, but this is the most important thing that I have, is my network. Tom's in my network. So if I'm gonna go to the area, text old Tom, hey man, we get to move in. Yeah. So, Having a network among your friends that fish is very important. One of the most important things that you can have, and so we can compare notes. And on my network, you know, I talk to somebody and I say, what do you call it lately? And so, and most of them will say, this is what I've done. But in return, and this is a, a very important point it's got to be a two-way street you got you know if I go and then Tom gets in touch with me Tom I call this this and this I saw this this and this this is where the conditions and be totally up front then you build a network and I and I've got part of my network is in people in Mississippi course here in Florida so if I'm going to go well you know we've had all this rain and it's dirty over here I can't go over here but I know I can go to Santa Rosa Sound because it stays clear all the time I say hey what have you been catching you know and you, you know and you can point people in the right direction and it just saves time and it saves money so 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 having a network is probably my number one thing. And and I continue to build, I always add somebody. And then, but I always tell them, I say, hey, you know, I know what's going on. So this can't be just a one way street. You know? So I've got people all the way down to destiny and stuff. So this is jerk and nobody likes you. <laughs> Well, then you need to own a fly shop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so network is important. If I could say anything, once you help somebody out and they go, they get back in touch with you and, and you actually pointed them in the right direction, they're going to be your buddy whether they well, like I, you or not. I'm joking. I, I know. I have a pretty good. Yeah. You're right, though. I mean, you call people and as long as it's a tit for tat, man, you know, and. And that's the thing that I found out about fly fishermen. Normally fly fishermen, if you ask them, they're going to tell you the truth. Whereas turkey hunters and other types of fishermen, they just lie to you. Well, you know, so, so the great thing about the fly community, in general, most people in the fly community, they keep a few fish, but they let everything go. So I, I don't mind helping, you know, somebody out because I know you know, he's gonna catch a fish, he's gonna take care of that fish, and he's gonna return it, versus I'm not gonna send somebody if I know that they mm -hmm. don't, you know, if they're gonna grease everything, you know, I'm not gonna do it. So, so I you know, I that's important. So we come down to weather, and thank God we are getting toward the best time of year, fall, <laughs> thank God. So, so I don't even fish, the last time I fished, was the first of June. It was, I caught a pompano on my fly rod June the second. I think I went one other time after that. I hibernate during the summer. I just don't deal with it because it's too hot. There's too many jet skis. There's too many boats. You know, you know, fishing is you know kind of mediocre. You know, I mean, you know, occasionally you can hit you know something right, but. I don't even fool me. So I'm jumping at the bitch right now. So I just wait, no man, come on, come on, you know. 
So, so any really good fisherman is a good weather person because it, it can make or break a trip. You know, we get, we're fixing to get into hopefully cooler days. We're not going to, we haven't had much rain, but it's going to get to, in the fall, October is our driest month. So we're going to get into clear water. We're going to start to get, you know, some north winds, cool down, water temperature is going to drop. Everything's going to get better. So it's coming. But being a really good weather person will help you fish. Because if we get a hard north wind day, bluebird sky, it's one of my favorite days because I sight fish. So having places that you can go to on a hard north wind that it's still going to be calm is important. So, so, and I have places in my head that I know that if it's blowing out of the east, I go to these places because it's going to be calm, you know. So, you know, and I'm talking about, you know, there's days that I fish when it, you know, it's a blue northern blowing. I mean, it's hard. But so, so, so having a bunch of numerous places so that the different weather conditions you can still, you know, fish. And you know, if it's a 25 knot wind out of the north, you can't go to the south end of Mobile Bay and try to fish on the bay side. You know, so, you know, just basic stuff like that. You know, so I have a bunch of weather apps, and I'm just a weather geek. I like it. You know, I keep up, you know, with tropical weather. You know, it's just like, this coming Monday, we're going to have a little low pressure that's going to go across the central yeah. Gulf, and we're going to have east wind. We need east wind. It brings in clearer water. The main thing that I'm hoping it, that it gets pretty rough because we need it to kind of get this stagnant summertime pattern away from us, and it's, we're going to add oxygen to the water. So it's going to help our fishing. So learning weather is another important issue. Before I go in, anybody got any more questions? Pretty basic stuff, but being prepared, you know, and, and knowing where you're going to go, kind of having, you know, I call it, I, I call it my starting line of that I have I take, usually I take four, four fly rods with me, and I'll have one rig for a certain species, and then another one, or I may have two. If I know that there's going to be a certain species that is, I know it's going to be there, let's say it's going to be redfish, I'll have a couple of different flies on, I've got, but but so they are, you know they're you know they're all they're all for a different thing. That's, the, the only reason that Peter lets me come here is because I bought nine fly rods. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so so it, it's um, you know not only do we prepare this way, having our tap perfect example, and I was talking to Sam about it a few minutes ago. I have all this fish experience for all those years, but it was offshore. Then I retired about seven or eight years ago, and I, and I was a conventional fisherman, and I was starting to learn the inshore. Well, all 45 years of offshore experience helped me inshore. So, you know, I was learning all these new areas, and. I was learning all this stuff, and then I made the mistake of walking into a fly shop over here, and I met this guy. Mm -hmm. And so, he, he, I bought a fly rod. And I bought a fly rod on a Wednesday, and I caught my first redfish on a Friday. And I've been hooked ever since. But the, 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 the great thing about fly fishing, and we're talking about fishing in skinny, clear water. The 
the nature of a fly rod fits that type of fishing. And and so I've had to learn all this all over again. Just like and and what's the greatest thing about this? It was like I started fishing all over again. Like I rediscovered fishing. And so I've really enjoyed it. And so I really apply myself. I practice a lot. I mean a lot. Like there's nothing for me to do five practice sessions a day. So so we're gonna prepare this away. We're gonna prepare with with our tackle. And we're going to develop our personal skills. So talking about the phone. So that's one thing that a lot of people don't realize. We have a spring run and we have a fall. One of the things that I really wanted to do was I got all these species that I haven't caught on a fly rod. So, you know, I remember I caught my first red fish and then, you know, caught some speckled trout and I wanted to catch a pump run. So, it was, and I'd gone a couple of times and had, hadn't seen any. And then, and it was kind of getting late in the season for the, you know, the spring run. And I was on the south side of Dolphin Island. And one of the things that I learned conventional fishing is about pumping or skipping. Did everybody know what pumping or skipping is? So these pompano, you know, if they get around a boat that's going forward at a pretty good speed, they have a behavior where they jump out of the water, they turn sideways, and they skip across the water. So that's a great way, you know, to, to you know, to find some pompano. So, so October of last year, I was running along, and there's, I don't run real fast. I got a boat that run fast, but I don't run real fast because I want to have situational awareness. And I run along, and you know, I kind of look behind me. Man, all these pompanos, they start skipping, skipping. Around. I said, "Whoa!" I pull it back, you know, come around, and and I was conventional fishing. And so, to make a long story short, in about an hour I caught nine pumpkin. Every one of them was over 16 inches. Turned every one of them loose. So, so, but then I wanted to catch one on a fly rod. So it, it, it was, it was June, June the second, and I was on the south side of Dolphin Island, and I skipped a pumpkin with my trolling boat because. My trolling motor, I had it on about seven, and I was trying to move down the beach a little bit and skip the bump. I said, like, hmm. Huh. So I went up there about 50 yards, current the winds going back down this way, so I made a drift back down to it, and got lucky, and I caught pumping over with my fly rod. But I had a fly rod ready. I was prepared. What flies do you have on it? Pumping those like anything yellow or orange. So I tie a little fly that, that it had some tan and orange on it. So, so one of the best things to use over here, now that you asked that question, is this right now. And all I do is just palm it on the hook. And, and for some reason, Papa No Love, orange or yellow, and just a small fly. Stay in contact with the bottom, you know, so, you, you know, use a little weight with it, but, you know, it's nothing fancy, but the way I look at a pump and up, it's kind of like our pump, you know, so it's what I enjoy. But the moral of the story is being prepared, you know, when I go I have four rods and, you know, I have a variety of flies, but, 
what to look for. If, you know, you pick out your species. You know, let's say I want to look at a redfish, a pompano. You know, so I break it down. You know, I know those fish are going to be in the beach areas, and then specks more on. You know, you'll find some in the in the beach areas, especially in the late spring, early summer. And so I don't go look where I know they're not going to be. So, you know, <coughs> learning your species, where they are at the seasons, you know, things are fixing to change here because the water hopefully is going to cool down. So preparation, develop personal skills. Another skill that is hardly ever talked about is being able to see fish. And and during my Gulf of Mexico career, I was known for cobia fishing. And it, it was a sight fisher. They're migrating from east to west during the month of April and we look for them. So being a good sight fisherman is important, you know, Find quality glasses. I have prescription Bahios and I love them and I have them. There's actually one of their glasses that's designed just for the flats and that's what I have. One trick when I carry some people fishing, and I just carry friends, I don't charter or anything like that. When we release a fish, I say, Y'all watch that fish right there until you can't see it anymore. And I'll be fish to swim off and swim off and swim off and I said watch it or watch it. and what that's doing is training you to know what to look for so next time it, you know instead of fish swimming away hopefully he's, he's swimming towards it but personal skill of seeing fish and casting you know <laughs> casting you know having someone like Tom or Peter you know extremely important you know I'm glad that he's fixing the cover being quick. So back in the mid-90s, I took a, a gentleman. All we did was chase world records on fly. That's all we did. We got lucky and we set nine world records. So, so and one of the things that, 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 that was an issue was not being quick enough. So, it, you know, it's nice to sit there and make a perfect cast with a, you know, tight loop and, and all that, but in a fishing situation, being quick because, you know, the closer your boat gets to a fish, especially in skinny water, he's going to feel the boat and then he's going to turn around and want to, you know, leave. So, being able to spot the fish as far away from the boat as you can, which develop your, you know, ability to see a fish, and you know, being quick, you know, because many a time that I said just drop the fly, you know, what I mean, <laughs> got guys, you know, that fall, and they fall in love with these all these fall catch. Just get it in the water, you know, because I can look at a fish and tell you, you know, how he's going to behave. You know, so but that's about all I got, you know what I mean? So if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. You know. All right.